Today's video is sponsored by Mullingmers.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world. The new Rise and Grind t-shirts are just about to drop as well, so please check them out before they're all gone. Thank you for the support so far. I think you always should visualize your goals. You know, like as a businessman, if you want to own uh, the, the biggest, uh, if you want to own a whole street of stuff, you know, just, you should always visualize, you know, like the, like I, you know, I always said I want to open a gym, you know, as well. And I visualized driving past places and be like, I want to own that as a gym, you know. And when it actually happens, you're like, this is, this is cool. So yeah, I think you should always kind of visualize things in your life. I'm always kind of, just the way I, I'm always kind of visualizing, not just in the gym, you know, out the gym as well, what kind of, you know, what can I do to improve myself, you know, visualizing if it's a task I've got to go in front of me, even going on trains, I'm like visualizing the best routes, you know, I'm always kind of visualizing the route before I do it and stuff. So yeah, it's always, I'm always having that in my back of my mind, so. For example, uh, for so like the world record in the 265 when we was in Ohio, uh, Obviously, I kind of, that was a bonus lift, you know, went over there, Steve Slater was like, here's a 265, you want to do this? I was like, I said to him, yeah, because I, I, I stood over at the stone, visualised how to lift it, and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to do it. So it was just basically, I went on stage, visualised it, stepped back, stepped forward and lifted it over, you know, and that's, I always do that with every lift, because that's how I, you know, that's how I kind of programme the lift, and it works 99% of the time. <laughs> Obviously, you have the King of Stones title, you know, it comes a lot of pressure, you know, and you have to, like I said, prove it. So, yeah, doing that 265, it wasn't my, I visualized, obviously out there was, a, I was wanting a 256, but I was training to visualizing for a 280, you know, 285 already that. So I was like, yeah, 265 is all right, you know, <laughs> just walk off and do it again. But, you know, it's not being cocky, it's being confident and humble. And that's what the difference is being cocky and confident. I was confident, I was there for a reason, you know, I visualized even before I stepped on the plane, what I needed to do. Every day I was in my head just going over and over and over, and sometimes panicking, going like, am I visualizing this too much? But it was what I did. And then, you know, I broke the record, came back here, said to them, let's do the 286, same again. As soon as I, the, as soon as the uh, stone landed in my gym, I was visualizing it every day, like, you know, I know what to do, I know what to do, I know what to do, and it's, it's worked since, so yeah. That's kind of the bittersweet thing, you've already had it, but you've not had it, so you're, yeah, but you're more confident you're going to get it because you've, you know exactly the plan to do it, you know, so. Our lives are a product of our imagination. We can create the life that we want if we believe in it, if we visualise it. And if people don't believe that theory, you know, if, if, if they, they struggle with that, which a lot of people do, it's as simple as creating what you want into your subconscious. Like I talked about before, you know, our minds are a goal striving, goal getting machine that will stop at nothing till it gets what your dominant thoughts focus on. That's all you're doing. So for me, you know, when I do that, I'm planting what I want, the goal that I want in my subconscious. You would then subconsciously take decisions and take, and, and, and make decisions and take actions that reflect your goal that is in your subconscious. It's the reason I passed Royal Marines training. It's the reason I did special forces selection, you know, and did it, you know, I kept on going till I passed against all odds. You know, I've been doing it all my life, you know, but, you know, anyone that tells me that it doesn't work, they're, as far as I'm concerned, they're losing out. I've got, I've got no advantage telling people this stuff works. I'm just telling you from my experience what happened, you know, but now, I just, you know, a lot of this comes down, the more and more I see this on a daily basis, I feel that, you know what, when it comes to humans, we don't even know our true power. It's been so hidden from us by social programming, education, that we don't know our true power. And we have got so much, every person on this planet has a gift. Everyone has the same skills. Everyone has the ability to create the lifestyle that they want. And those, amazing, that amazing gift has been taken away from us because we've been programmed socially, through education, everything. You know, we, we've lost our power. Vision is absolutely essential. There was a time in our business recently where I, I, I keep my vision in my journal. I map my business vision on a whiteboard that sits in my office. I have a vision for my relationship. I have a vision for my life. I have a vision for my bank account. I have a vision for my impact. I have a vision for the work that I'm doing in the human evolution space. And 
I think with everything that happened with COVID-19, that year, I lost sight of my vision. We, we moved into so many pivots and just really trying to serve our community and make sure we could survive as a business. And there was such a disruption of the day-to-day -day norms that we were used to, which ended up being a tremendous blessing. But um, I was sharing with my wife who runs and is president of our company. Uh, I said, you know, things have felt stagnant recently, ever since January when we did the 2021 Bulletproof Business Challenge. And this was now seven months later. And she said, yeah, things have felt stagnant. They felt uninspired. They felt uh, like low energy. And I went into the garage a couple of nights later and I saw the whiteboard that was normally in my office, which was in the garage because we were back in our second home and we had moved. And I looked at the whiteboard and it was the last time that I had done it. And the last month was the January with the 2021 Bulletproof Business Challenge. And like, it shocked me. Like, I understand how important vision is. And what's interesting is that, you know, vision, vision and imagination are so powerful because the brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. So when you give yourself permission to envision a future, you literally start building memories in your brain of events that haven't happened yet. You, you start to create neural networks of your future. And so, I mean, think about how incredibly powerful that is. I mean, it's almost sounds like something out of an Avengers movie. And so that change in your brain that holds the vision of the future now is what starts to tune you in to the thoughts and the ideas that will bridge the gap between the now and the future. It begins to alter your perception so that you pay attention to things that will bridge the gap between now and the future. You begin to program your unconscious mind with that future. And so you start making decisions that you're not even aware of that become the bridge between now and that future. And then of course, you know, we live in a vibrational reality. Your brain is this electrical output device. Every time you think you're creating electrical signals in your brain, that's interacting and transmitting with an energetic reality you can go back to high school science and understand that the table that's in front of you is 99.9 percent .9 nothing right it's our tactile senses and our vision and our olfactory and our taste and our hearing it's like browsers that are interpreting this matrix like fluctuating energetic reality into a physical reality so when you think thoughts you're you're essentially adding to that energetic pool and so that vision is also contributing to you outputting energy that's creating coincidences and synchronicities to bridge the gap between now and that vision. So vision is essential. And it reminds me of a quote that I think was attributed to Dwight D. Eisenhower that said, plans are useless, planning is essential. Every vision board I ever created, and I like to create the timing, January through December, what I'm going to achieve, when I'm going to do it. Never have I ever achieved even close to everything on that vision board. But what, do I, what I did achieve was amazing. But the absence of the vision board for just six months in my life brought everything to a screeching halt. And that, again, just shocked me. Like, it's profound. And so sometimes people will get vision board burnout because they're like, well, I'm creating the vision, but that's not what I actually created in my life. And I would say that's not actually really the important part. Just keep holding the vision. Over time, you'll get there. But in the meantime, you'll create extraordinary things that you absolutely love because you've, you're, you're going through the planning process for your future, right? The actual results of the plan as well. When I competed in martial arts, I always used to visualize myself getting my hand raised. When I was going through Royal Marines training, I always visualized what it would feel like to be presented with that green beret. And then when I you know, achieved that goal at the Meadows Parade, I came home here on a Friday evening and I just thought, this is what I need to do in my life for everything. Not just you know, set one goal to walk at the Meadows Parade, fitness, finance, family, every, every area that's important in my life, I need to set goals in these areas and drive forward towards achieving them. Because I think it's very dangerous not just in my situation, but in anyone's situation, if you stay static for too long and the negative thoughts start coming in, you've always got to have something positive 
to, to move towards and strive towards to occupy your headspace. You know, 80, 90, 95% of it has got to be positive and driving forward towards something that you want to achieve. If you can't visualize yourself achieving your goals, then you'll never achieve your goals, you know? It, it, everything starts in the mind. Like if, if you have, you have to believe truly in your heart that you will achieve what you want to do, whether that's, you know, achieving the grades you want to in school or, or uh, getting to a certain level in business or, or closing a deal that, that brings in X amount of money. If you don't believe it's gonna happen, if you can't visualize that process of what it actually feels like as well, which is something that I did quite a lot, is when I'm using imagery in my mind, I'll actually, see myself there competing or, or achieving my goal, but also focus on that feeling of how would it feel to achieve my goal. And it, that creates a pretty strong bond. You know, it, it, that, that link between the two is, getting an emotional link to achieving your goal is, is hugely important. I think that's what, what uh, drives people, you know, and, and if, if people want to achieve their goals, whatever it may be, if it's a sporting goal or whatever, then the first step is, is believing in themselves and, and, and imagining themselves and achieving their goal. A lot of people, the way we're going to, the way we're wired, and this comes down to evolution because we're always looking for the negatives. We all know that once you create an idea in your head, we always look for things that are going to go wrong. We don't sit there and focus about how great it's going to be when we get that. Whether that's starting a new business, relationship, whatever it is, whether it's taking your exams, you always think about the panic of not passing the panic of what could go wrong and that's what we end up visualizing visualizing you know what i mean and, and it's about just changing that energy to be more positive so really it's the thing is with this you'll get so many people that disbelieve and will never engage in it but until they when they do it once they only need a little taste and once they've got a little taste to know that this stuff really does work that will change their life forever you know, you guys must know yourself that happens. You know, once you get a taste that this stuff works, it's contagious, like you wouldn't believe. And that, you know, I could tell people, I, me and my partner, my fiance, Laura, we could tell people stories that they, no one would believe us. No one would believe a word. You know, the, the coincidences, if you want to call them that, they're not coincidences. Once you've got yourself lined up spiritually, once you've created that bandwidth that is way away from fear, because fear doesn't allow for creativity, the opportunities are already there. Everything's already lined up. A lot of people say in life that, oh, well, you know, I can't wait to, for the opportunities to line up. They're already there. It's you that have got to line yourself up. And that's when you come from a place of belief and when you're not li living in a state of fear. And unfortunately at the moment, it's amplified at the moment, fear is driving society through the news, through everything, through the current COVID pandemic, fear is driving society because that's the only way you can control a society. We live in this, and you look at the news, you look at the newspapers, everything is fear. But once you disengage from that, I mean, I don't read any newspapers. I don't watch the news. I don't watch TV. If I do watch TV, it's very, something very specific, you know, a film or whatever. But I'm very conscious about the content that goes into here. And really, you know, once people have a, have a taste of visualization, you know, I do, I do online courses where I get people to sit down and meditate. For me, meditation, again, people think, how can this guy from the Special Forces meditate? That's, that's Glastonbury hippie stuff. Meditation for me is my focused attention at an intention. It's my moment for me to visualize, create calmness in here, and be able to visualize in what I want, okay? And once I learn to create that stillness of mind, it allows that clarity of vision to what I want. Our heads have 70,000 thoughts probably more going around each day. Now, if you don't focus on some things that you want out of that 70,000 thoughts, you're gonna end up with a load of crap that you don't want. And that's the problem with people. They allow the 70,000 thoughts just to be like this washing machine of ideas and they don't define what they want in life. So that's why they're basically just bouncing like a pinball from side to side, not knowing where they're going and that's being decided for them but it's just about creating clear vision and intent for what you want. And that for me, you know, is such an important process and which came years later. That morning routine for me is, 
is a life changer. You know, it's where I set myself up for each and every day and I dominate each and every day. You know, there was a study done in 2009. It was featured in Time Magazine at Harvard where they brought in piano players to play the piano. They played the piano and they studied what parts of their brain lit up. Then they had to come back and imagine playing the piano and essentially the same parts of the brain lit up. And so when, when you're willing to engage in vision, most people get stuck because they're like, I don't know how. So I'm going to wait till I know how to really indulge my future. But if you're willing to indulge your future now, you begin to create neural networks of a future memory that hasn't happened yet. Right? So now you're walking around with your future between your ears. And, and so people get it backwards. They're like, well, I don't know how I'm going to create a successful business, or I don't know how I'm going to have an amazing relationship, or I don't know how I'm going to find my soulmate. And so because I don't know how, I'm not going to indulge imagination or vision. And so they end up getting stuck because that how that they're looking for comes through the changing of your brain as a result of imagination. Something that I've used a lot, uh, and I hear, I hear about it a lot from successful people, but I'd love to hear your opinion on it, is like a visualization or manifestation and having like positive thoughts and or genuinely believing that I've achieved something before I've achieved it. It works really well for me. I've seen it work really well for friends of mine and athletes who I know. Is it a real thing? Does it, and does it help in the brain or? So I'll, I'll give you the, the, the yes and the no. So, so to an extent, there's kind of like this, um, you know, mystical approach that says, if you imagine that you're rich, you're gonna be rich. No evidence for that. It, it's like, it's, you know, it's useful to think positively. And it's useful to have goals. And it's useful that if you vision the goal, you actually can more likely to vision the, the sub goals and do them. So, so to that extent, like it's helpful. But just sitting in, in your on your couch and imagining uh, being rich and thinking about it won't make you rich. You have to actually go out and do something for that to happen. So, so, so the, the the negative is that like just kind of uh, believing it, we, we have no evidence that it works. We do have evidence that actually thinking about a, a, a task concretely and saying this is like just saying out loud i want this is what i want and and breaking down to steps and saying and these are the things i'm gonna make to make it happen those things actually help that they break down an untouchable kind of goal which is i want to have a kid to okay for that i need to work on this this and i need to talk to my person about that and you kind of like start so that sounds like it is and i would say there's some evidence that in some domains Actually, just thinking, just imagining does make a difference. I'll give you an example that's concrete. There's a study, I forget by uh, whom I uh, uh, to come back to me, maybe, that shows that uh, if you're trying to diet, to not eat, and actually before you go to the supermarket to buy food, you sit, you close your eyes, and you really imagine eating and opening the box and kind of taking a bite and chewing and so on. Doing this thing actually activates some part of your brain to an extent that it actually makes your body respond as if you've eaten something and, and it lowers the hunger. So when you go to the supermarket, instead of just taking the entire kind of uh, junk food shelf and putting it in a box, you will be a little bit uh, fuller, uh, a little bit less likely to be tempted. So, so in that sense, there are some kind of concrete things that you can do that actually affect you know, metabolism and, and physiology so that you actually are a little bit hungrier, a little bit, sorry, not, not a little less hungrier, a little bit fuller. So, so, you know, I think you asked me more kind of mystical thing, like me imagining being rich, will it actually change the world? There's no quantum effect by which you imagine something and the reality kind of finds itself. But our brain drives our thoughts, drives our actions. In that sense, the more we put in the brain concrete thoughts, they will lead to actions. I was traveling in Thailand not long after graduating from college um, and I saw a couple guys jumping a flaming jump rope down the beach and I'm 22 years old at the time, maybe not a fully formed prefrontal cortex or didn't uh, didn't uh, have the realizing how risky that was, but I did that and in an instant my life changed. So the rope, it wrapped around my legs and let my body completely on fire, you know, to my neck. Uh, survival mode kicked in when I needed it most and I jumped in the ocean which extinguished the flames but not before about 25% of my body was severely burned predominantly my legs and my feet and you know I was in a I was taken in a, a moped not an ambulance but a little moped down a dirt path like this one room shack I was on this island in the middle of nowhere in town there was not proper medical facilities but they couldn't move me and so they 
I went under, and underwent eight surgeries on these small island hospitals. Um, there was a cat running around my bed and across my chest in the ICU. I mean, just basically a nightmare scenario. But the physical pain was one thing, but the emotional pain, I'll never forget this moment. This doctor walks in and he looks me straight in the eyes and through his broken Thai English, he basically looks at me and goes, Colin, you'll never walk again normally. Just boom. Um, and so the emotional sort of downward spiral was immense. I've been an athlete, an active kid and just all of a sudden you know from a stupid mistake you know my life as I knew it was taken away from me but we were speaking about my mother before and she's really the hero of this story which is she flew over to Thailand took her four or five days to find me and track me down and I said look they say I'm never going to walk again normally and she goes you know forget about that for a second close your eyes and she says visualize you living your best life visualize yourself on the other side of this adversity like what are you doing you know let's really visualize this and this is still this the same mother that told me you can do anything you set your mind to as i was a little kid and i closed my eyes um and i said i start kind of smiling she's like what is it and i say i see myself crossing the finish line of a triathlon which is not something, I was a swimmer, but I've never you know, raced a triathlon before, but that's kind of what came to me in this moment. And what happened next, I think is probably one of the most important moments in my life. My mother could have said, you know, I said, visualize something, but like the doctor said, you're not gonna walk again. I'm bandaged from the waist down. I can't, I haven't taken a step in a month. And she could have said, you know what? Like maybe something more realistic, but she didn't do that. Instead, she was just like, okay, like, great, I believe you. You're gonna, I don't know how we're gonna get there, but you're gonna do that and let's start training the mind and your body um, to get there. And so it was several months where I didn't take a single step. I was actually flown back to Portland, Oregon, where I'm from, but I was carried on and off the planes after two months of being in Thailand. I was in a wheelchair when I got home. But my mom didn't let up on that goal. She says to me that first morning, I'm sitting in a wheelchair in her kitchen and she goes, Today, your goal is to take your very first step. She took a wooden chair from the table in front of our kitchen and placed it in front of my wheelchair. She goes, you gotta figure out somehow how to take your first step today into that chair in front of me. Now I'm looking down at my legs. They're still bandaged. They're still bleeding. They're still fragile. I haven't taken a single step at all, but it takes me three hours kind of grabbing the edges of the wheelchair to get the courage to take that step on these still burnt feet. But I take one step and sit in the chair down next in front of me. But the next day my mom moves the chair five steps away, the next 10 steps away, each day I can take a few more steps. And then eventually fast forward 18 months after I've been burned, I'd moved to Chicago to take a, a job to kind of, kind of get, get on with my life after this terrible tragedy. Um, and I did sign up for the Chicago triathlon to kind of honor this goal. And through that year and a half, I had learned how to walk again and slowly run and jog. And so I sign up for the, the, the Chicago triathlon. I jump into the lake, I swim a mile in the lake, I get on my bike, I ride 25 miles as fast as I can. I put on my running shoes and I run 6.2 miles, uh, 10K, uh, crossing the finish line. And to my, I was so excited that I had, you know, gone from this wheelchair, being told I would never walk again to finishing this race. But what was completely surprising to me is I hadn't just finished the race, but I actually won the entire Chicago triathlon, uh, placing first out of nearly 5,000 other participants uh, on the day. I forgive it's, it's somewhat of a long answer, but in conclusion, my mind didn't go in that moment like, oh, I must be an amazing athlete. My first triathlon, I win, beat 5,000 other people. That's not, my mind didn't go there at all. My mind went back to that Thai hospital room and wondered what would have happened had my mom not forced me to look towards the future and set this measurable goal. And in that moment, I realized that all of us, not just me, you, every single person on this planet, we have reservoirs of untapped potential inside of us to achieve extraordinary things, particularly when we can shift our mindsets towards the positive in these dark moments. Life is hard. I don't, you know, hopefully you don't get burned in a fire, but you will face adversity. You will face setbacks. I don't care how rich or poor or young or old, whatever you are, like that's part of life. But what I realize is we have an opportunity to decide how we react in those moments. And the mother that told me throughout my whole life, you can do anything you set your mind to, she stuck to that positivity and those ethos, even in the scariest, darkest moments of both of our lives in rural Thailand, wrapped in bandages and gauze. She still was like, this isn't 
this isn't the forever situation. What do you want to visualize? What do you want to be? And so I love to tell people that's just my experience, but I think it in some regard applies to every single person, which is again, we can unlock that potential. We can unlock that reservoir of vast potential inside of all of us. And really the choice is up to us and how we switch our mindset. And so my mother, um, although she was incepting me bit by bit as a child, really in this deep, dark moment, taught me one of life's greatest lessons in the face of extreme adversity. Thank you so much to all those guys talking about visualization. So many of my successful friends and people that I speak to in the industry and people who I speak to, who, billionaires and millionaires and uh, world champions across the world, all of them, bar none, I swear to you, all of them had one thing in common and it was that they used visualization. Whether they were aware of it or not, they all used visualization. And it's funny the majority of them know that they are using visualization, that it's a skill that they've heard about, it's a skill that they are using to become successful. Visualization is one of the most overlooked tools. We all understand how important it is. We all understand all these people talk about it frequently, but then we overlook it ourselves. Guys, I will sit in bed and imagine the metal from an Oscar, how cold it is, and the weight of that award, and holding it up on stage, and talking, and, and the smells, and the visualization, and the walking up the steps, all those things. I have done that for my whole life, and it really does work. This building that we're in right now, before we owned this building, before we even had a penny to be able to purchase this building, and be able to do this studio, and run this business, I visualized. I visualized the basketball court that we built. I visualized um, this, this studio space. I visualized it to the point of when we achieved it, it wasn't a shock. It felt like we just arrived where we were supposed to be. And it's a funny feeling when you achieve something you visualize so much because you kind of already had it because your visualization was so strong. I can't express enough how important visualization is. I hope these guys explained it to you enough. Um, Luke Stoltman, Tom Stoltman, they all used visualization of holding that gold trophy, of, of being Europe's strongest man, of being two times world's strongest man. So use these successful people as a lesson and an example of the need to use visualization. Start using it, day-to-day -day basis, whatever it is, getting a dream body, getting a, a new car, start using visualization. Sorry guys, I'm just passionate about visualization. It is very, very important. Guys, today's video was sponsored by MulliganRunners.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world, and the new Rise and Grind t-shirts have just dropped on the website. Get them before they are gone. There's a limited quantity. They are fitted for the gym, so they hug your biceps. Um, they've got the new MulliganRunners tags on there. They fit across the chest, and also the training hoodies are now out as well. Um, all linked down below. Like I say, get them before they're gone, guys. But thank you so much for the support on MulliganRunners.com. We're all in this together. We're all just trying to achieve stuff passionately and with purpose. And for me, that is all about the Inspired Change movement. So keep moving forward with passion and purpose. Have a blessed and productive day. I am your host, Jordan Mulligan, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.